you know, fentanyl, obviously, obviously fentanyl is the highest suspected drug involvement in overdoses from January to September. And uh, we had over 22%, 22% of our overdoses were fentanyl. Uh, prescription drugs were the second highest at 7.1. And we have that graph there that shows you that uh, clearly uh, the issues we're having with, with fentanyl. <clears throat> and then also to the left there, you'll see the suspected drug. On the second page of those 38 reported overdoses, 13 people were under the age of 21. And then the second most reported age range was 26 to 30. <clears throat> you know, of the highest reported overdose drug type, fentanyl, the ages most affected were under 21, with eight fentanyl overdoses, and then from 26 to 30 range, five fentanyl overdoses. And if you can see those graphs, it gives a little more detail of, of what we're running into uh, dealing with the overdoses. 17% of the reported overdoses involved white, and then non-Hispanic individuals were 12.3%. Uh, Hispanic, Hispanic non-white. So you can see the races that that is affecting the most, <clears throat> and um, you know what what uh, what the what the data says and the number that says of the highest report overdose drug type fentanyl, the races most affected were white, non-Hispanic at 12 and a half percent, and fentanyl overdoses and white Hispanic at 7.3 fentanyl overdoses. Um, so it's kind of just a little snapshot of what we're seeing this year. <clears throat> we really didn't start uh, doing the numbers uh, until this year, uh, digging into them and seeing what type of individuals are doing at the ages. I, I know uh, you have some law enforcement people there, but one of the things I wanted to, to uh, also put out there, are you guys familiar with the Arizona Haida, Bob? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, I know there's the opioid, the opioid a monitoring initiative you can get on there's for the public and it's for you know uh entities like you didn't go in there and sign up and they'll give you the spots of where they're having the, the most fentanyl uh issues at right now uh all you gotta do is get on there and i think it's uh resources but anybody on, on this committee or members can get on there and sign up and, and they'll provide a <clears throat> they'll provide the data for you on, on overdoses all over the state and then also in cascadana pinal county um uh, so that's kind of the data there. I will probably get more involved next month on on uh, how many arrests. I just need to find a way to pull that out of the system. Um, as you know, our counterparts down at the border that we work with and partner with have been telling us the last couple of months that a lot of the other drugs that they're confiscating and taking and getting them uh, <clears throat> taking them down to their labs, they're finding that the marijuana is laced with fentanyl now, cocaine is being laced with fentanyl now. So they're trying to make that drug a lot more potent and uh, that's causing a lot of our overdoses. So it, it is a big problem for us. We just a couple weeks ago conducted some very large uh, fentanyl arrests. I mean, uh, it's unheard of, but fentanyl is so easy to smuggle coming across the border, you know, foot traffic and then individuals with backpacks coming across the border. You imagine the amount of, of fentanyl pills you can put in just a backpack, you know, compared to the other drugs, how much easier it is. So, it is a challenge for law enforcement to, to try to stop it. Uh, and, and it's a very dangerous, potent drug. And I've been involved in 32 years of law enforcement and saw the uh, cocaine, heroin, uh, and then methamphetamine, and then heroin again. But this fentanyl, <clears throat> it's a whole different animal that's causing us a lot of issues and, and causing the public a lot of issues. Uh, so it's good to have an initiative like this that find a way to, to offer services. Um, with that, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I have a quick question, Chief. Um, compared to like last year or previous years, uh, is this overdose rate higher, the same, lower? How does it compare with uh, past years? I'm gonna I'm gonna say that, that this year is probably a little higher, um, and it's because we didn't know what what the drug was initially a couple of years ago, and, and we were fortunate it hit the valley first in Tucson. And we weren't seeing a lot of the overdoses right at the right at the stages of, of this epidemic. Uh, we started seeing it last year. Uh, we started seeing a lot more in Cascadande, and then as you can see this year. But <clears throat> I will try to get a comparison of the last three years for the next meeting. And uh, but I'm just taking the educated guess that it, that it is a lot more. We're seeing a lot more uh, this year than than the previous years. 
And again, there's a lot of them that may not be reported. You know, if somebody gets an overdose and then they end up going into the valley, you know, we don't know about that. Um, so, or they go to Tucson or go back to the reservation to seek medical attention. You know, we're not, we're not going to know about that unless they call us. So, uh, you know, those numbers can be skewed a little bit for those individuals that don't seek help or were, were revived by a family member and they didn't call medical help or call, call, uh, call the police. So, uh, those are the numbers that we're actually called to. So <clears throat> I will find those numbers for you there. Um, okay. and uh, any, anything else that you want, Bob, I can, I can look up. We have our individuals that can do that. Okay, great. Um, I'm curious, um, uh, uh, is there any pattern or trend in, uh, you know, other than like gender and uh, uh, ethnicity, are you seeing any other trends in terms of uh, the people that are overdosing? Is it, is it random people are overdosing? Is it, is it, um, I don't know, uh, people that live on the street? Is it kids? Like, can you talk a little bit more about what you're seeing? Well, I think this is hitting all levels of our society. You know, individuals, uh, you know, the, the prescription, what happened with the prescriptions is, is, you know, during the Obama administration, that was the right thing to do. They saw they had an opioid issue, but the issue was, is that just stopped it. And there was no help for those individuals, those elderly people, those individuals that have been, uh, been taking opioids for, for 20, 30 years. So that's why the cartel started hitting this fentanyl and that fentanyl took its place. So we have all types of lives, uh, uh, overdosing on fentanyl or being arrested on fentanyl. So it does just not uh, attacking the poor or middle class. We have uh, all uh, walks of life that uh, are using this, are using this fentanyl. So easy to get now, you know, so easy and so cheap that uh, it's just taking the place of, you know, our opioid issues that we had for, for many years. And all of a sudden you put it into it without providing resources to help these individuals, you know, they're going to go seek out something like fentanyl. So that's what happened. Yeah, gotcha. Thank you. Sarah, you have a hand up? Yes. Hello, Chief. Thank you for your presentation. Um, and I think you answered my question already, but um, these are these are not fatal overdoses necessarily. Is that correct? Are these the overdoses that um, your, your team has been called to um, address with fentanyl? Or I'm sorry, with Narcan? Or can you clarify a little bit more about the, what the data is? Yeah, I think that 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 not uh, fentanyl is just fentanyl overdoses, and they're they're to include fatality. I can get down in the dirt on that on the fatalities also. Uh, and then we've had some success with Narcan. I know this year we've had a couple. Or last year we had two or three. So we have had some success. Our officers getting there on time. Couldn't tell you about fire. They they may get there first at sometimes. They they probably successful too. I could get the numbers there. Uh, but these are the individuals that, you know, overdose and uh, uh, either were on their way to the hospital when we got there or, you know, unfortunately it was a fatal overdose and we got there, uh, you know, afterwards. Okay. Other questions? There's no way to bring in the numbers for people who are taking Narcan home for family use because they have a family member. So those numbers aren't even included in this, are they? No. And, you know, it's a good thing they started offering that Narcan to the public. Uh, I don't think, uh, you know, you can go get it and you don't have to sign for anything I, I'm, from what I understand. So Correct. it uh, Correct. you can order it. I mean, and that's a good thing that they're doing that. But yeah, that could be happening at home. Somebody uh, gets an overdose and they have Narcan and uh, they bring them back and then they don't call the police or they don't seek any medical attention. You know, that's happening. So, so in other words, this could be just kind of the tip of the iceberg. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot going on. There are, our numbers are always skewed. We try to get, you know, the most best data we can and accurate, but uh, you know, when you're dealing with, when you're dealing with this type of epidemic, you just, there's so many factors involved. Yeah. Um, I will say that uh, uh, we received a supply of uh, 200 uh, boxes of Narcan through Access, and it was through a, a, 
uh, Sergeant Sarecki from the uh, uh, DPS delivered delivered the Narcan here, and I've been working on getting it out to like the homeless care center and high schools and training high school nurses and and we did a training over at the Pinal County Attorney's Office uh, a week ago or two weeks ago. But it's like we have a training, we have a supply, and I will continue to order more and continue to be a distribution point. And it's the training is is really pretty fundamental. It's pretty basic, but but it's it's also really important because it also the training talks about the signs of overdose and what to do about it. Um, so I'd really like to make sure that uh, everybody understands that that we can be a resource for you here. Okay, thank you, Bob. If anybody has any follow-up questions, have them uh, email me. Can you put out my email address? And I look forward to uh, having your monthly meetings. And uh, you know, email me, and I will, in information enough time, I can get that data for you and for yeah. the, uh, the other members. Thank you. And and Chief, one other thing, um, we did order. I know you picked up a bunch of our materials to get around the community, but we did order door hangers. So if if you you all felt that there were a couple of areas that maybe where there have been, you know, the most overdoses present or something, or just good areas of town to hit. Um, I think we can assemble volunteers on our Saturday morning to go walk neighborhoods and put door hangers uh, on, on houses just to help spread awareness about the, about the fentanyl epidemic. Um, so I maybe could circle back with you and, and talk a little bit more about how that might look. And it looks like Letitia, looks like Letitia has a hand up. Thank you for your presentation. Um, and, you know, Bob, we sure appreciate you coming to the attorney's office to do our training. We did it during National um, Red Ribbon Week and our staff loved it. And I know one of our managers was in that meeting and is going to sign her entire crew up to do that. And it, it was great. It was an hour. It was detailed. It was quick. It was super helpful. And now I feel like we are very equipped to handle those things. So thanks for providing that, Bob. All right. You bet. Happy to do it. All right. Okay, Bob, anything else? Give me an email and uh, you don't have a number and I'll talk to you about those door hangers. I have a, a good idea where we can hang, hand them, uh, uh, put them up for areas we're having problems. Great. Let's, uh, let's get together on it and hope the doctor's appointment goes well and we sure appreciate your time.